In this video, we will briefly examine several structures and functions involved with the excretion systems of invertebrates. The processes each of these organisms undergo is important to free the body of toxic wastes created as a byproduct of digestion and metabolism. Given the wide variety of organisms classified as invertebrates, we will only be able to look at a small number of specific systems. However, these examples should give us some idea of the diverse methods invertebrates use to keep themselves waste-free. The flatworm excretory system uses nephridium as their excretory organ. At the end of each blind tubule of the nephridium is a ciliated flame cell. As fluid passes down the tubule, solutes are reabsorbed and returned to the body fluids. The blind ending intestine of trematodes consists of a simple sac with an interior or midventral mouth or a two-branch gut with an interior mouth. Between the mouth and the intestine are often a pharynx and esophagus receiving secretion from glands. The intestine is lined with digestive and absorption cells that are surrounded by a thin layer of muscles that force the material down the length of the intestine for excretion. Undigested residue passes out the back of the mouth. Another invertebrate organism that has an interesting excretory system is the sponge. What makes them unique is that because they're sessile and do not move, they have a special excretion process. Sponges do not have actual organs that most other organisms have to facilitate waste excretion, so instead their pores and cells take in water and oxygen through the diffusion process, and then carbon dioxide, ammonia, and other wastes are excreted by shooting the wastes out of an opening that ends up diffusing into the surrounding water. Other underwater uh, invertebrates such as coral and jellyfish have similar excretory processes. Corals expel waste through their outer skin-like layer, and then their waste, too, is diffused into the water, and jellyfish take in their food and excrete their waste from the same opening in their body, and then it's shot out into the water as well. For our next example of an invertebrate excretory system, I'm going to be talking about cephalopods, more specifically the octopus. Something that's unique about the octopus is that all of its internal organs are housed within its head. In the excretory system of the octopus, waste is eliminated through the use of two tubular structures called nephroidea, which function similar to the vertebrate kidney. This is where the nutrients and other substances are taken in by the octopus and absorbed into the body. Then excess fluids and waste continue through these tubes and empty into the mantle cavity, eventually exiting the body through a funnel at the base of the octopus's head. As you can see, methods and structures involved in invertebrate excretion can vary widely from one organism to another. Regardless of how they rid themselves of wastes, these excretion systems play a critical role in an organism's survival.